A very good uh, morning or afternoon, uh, everybody here, IT All Stars, and welcome to this uh, live webinar about becoming a virtual teacher and showing you what the hybrid classroom looks like. Um, we see that uh, attendees are still uh, coming into the webinar, so we'll just wait uh, another minute before we get started with this webinar. And we do apologize for the delay we've had before we started. Um, we'll start in one minute. Okay, um, again, welcome to this webinar for those that have joined in the last minute. And of course, welcome to this webinar on becoming a virtual teacher. And we'll show you how a hybrid classroom will look like. Um, probably uh, when you're in this webinar, you uh, possibly have read our blog post. And if you did, thank you very much for uh, reading our, uh, our blog. Um, where we shared some information on how the hybrid classroom looks like. Now we're in a special um, period of time where education has changed uh, due to some uh, um, events that came up uh, quite suddenly this year, uh, which we all know of. And um, we have been forced in uh, thinking about other ways of uh, organizing our education. And uh, we from i Learn Up or we at uh, ITLNF would like to share some uh, experiences and some nice ideas to help you to organize that our way of uh, educating. Now, before we do that, um, let's first, of course, introduce ourselves. Um, you can see two names here um, in the shared screen, but in the camera view, you will see that uh, we have three panelists here. Um, so myself, David Rebel, community manager um, at IT Technologies, trying to translate all the nece uh, necess necessities, sorry, uh, that teachers have in the software um, to make IT Learnup even better um, and to do that communication towards our users, uh, who we call our IT All Stars. And um, you also see um, in the panelists, uh, you can see Melanie, uh, Melanie Stanthart, who is our a colleague in Germany. Um, she is here in this call to address our uh, German speaking um, uh, users if they would have any questions. Um, and uh, when it comes to answering questions, I will give you some more uh, details on that uh, later on in a few minutes. Um, but to end with our introduction, we also have Anna Krivik, who is our education consultant. There she is, um, who's taking care of our training center and also helping me to make i learn LearnUp even better. Good. Um, without further ado, uh, let's begin with uh, some uh, practical points uh, before going into the information and the content. Um, first of all, you might have noticed that your microphone is muted, um, which is very practical when you're having a webinar with some uh, with a few hundred uh, participants, then it's easier to make sure that uh, uh, participants are muted, um, which is a nice piece of advice when you would start to do remote sessions uh, with students uh, of your own. Um, but if you do have questions, um, there is a Q&A option in the Zoom uh, in, uh, interface where you can drop your questions uh, to uh, the panelists. And then we will try to give you a clear and prompt answer as, uh, as soon as possible. Um, so uh, please use the Q&A functionality to drop your questions, of course. And then uh, for the German users, um, they can perfectly address their um, questions in German. And then my colleague Melanie will be responding to those questions um, directly. Um, one more thing, there is also a chat box you might have seen. Um, well, this chat box is more for 
general remarks on uh, uh, the, the course of events during the webinar. So if you would have pro uh, problems uh, hearing us, if you cannot see us, uh, things like that, you can drop into the chat box and then we'll uh, try to help you out uh, as much as we can, of course. Um, this session is all uh, also being recorded. Um, so if uh, you would know people that have, would have interest in uh, following uh, this webinar, you can share the recording that we will send to you later on. Um, you can share that directly, or you can look at the recording again afterwards if you would have missed something. Um, so that will be sent to you as soon as possible after this webinar. And uh, last but not least, uh, we will also be sharing a lot of uh, uh, information with you. And also in that mail, you will find some extra information that uh, could be helpful for you uh, starting to organize the hybrid classroom. So um, that's uh, a first uh, introduction of the practical details. Um, we also introduced ourselves and uh, we would also would like to know something about you. So I'm launching a poll right now as we speak. Um, so you would uh, see uh, a poll coming up on your screen with three questions. And we would like to ask for your answers. Um, the first question is what your function is. The second question is uh, what do you, in which education level do you specifically work? And a third question, um, do you already work with i3 Learn Hub? Um, so thank you for um, giving your response on those questions in the polling. I will um, leave this polling uh, open for some, uh, for some time, so then uh, you can take your time to answer those questions. Anakin. The word is yours. Thank you, Davy. Let's just share my screen. Here we go. So what is distance learning? In our minds, we have two ways of distance learning for the moment. The first one is a teacher at home who creates lessons and work for the children and send it by email. The second one is a teacher who is in his classroom, who will introduce some new materials and also maybe if possible, he uses a webcam where we actually create a hybrid classroom. This is the way of working we do for the moment because in some ways, we can invite students in the class again, but some of them will be at home, of course, and they need to have those lessons as well. So, but when we, when we talk about distance learning, we actually have two methods of distance learning. The first one is the individual, individual work, like sharing a lesson. You can do that by the connect like itreelearner.com or by Google Classroom. You know this because we already demonstrated it in the previous webinars. You can also look at it um, on our itree all stars page and our YouTube channel where you can see how everything works and we can have some um, examples of that if you want more. The next one and this is new for everybody, is the classroom instruction. Classroom instruction is very important for a teacher because you can actually provide new materials to your children by using your interactive whiteboard and a webcam if you want. And you can do it, of course, with i 3 Hub on air. A new function in i 3 Hub where you can share your whiteboarding together with a video conferencing tool. On that moment, you can see your students and students can see you. We have some new materials, like you can record it, you can talk with your children, and of course, 
it is very interactive. It won't be I3 learner on air if it wasn't interactive. So that means that you can create a session and you can work together on the same lesson. We have a demonstration. Davy, are you ready for it? Davy will share the code of the I3 on air session in the chat box. And you can, of course, um, open that link as well and create or come in our on air session. Davy, it's on you. Yes, thank you very much, Anneke. And then I will um, jump to my screen um, after Anneke has exited her uh, screen on right there. So uh, if everything's okay, you should be able to see my screen perfectly now. Uh, before I, I jump into uh, the demonstration of the IT Learn Up on Air functionality, I just want to emphasize that I have dropped the link to the i3 All-Stars YouTube channel in the chat box. So if you want to have um, another look at the webinar that we did previously on distance learning, then you can watch that again from our YouTube channel of i3 All-Stars. Um, so that being said, let's have a look on how we can uh, start uh, working um, with that remote uh, functionality, which we call i3 Learner. Now, actually, it's very simple. Um, uh, you can start directly from a white canvas, as you can see right here, or I can take a background with checker, with a checkered background and things like that. That is uh, perfectly possible. Um, so like I would do right there and then start working from here. Okay, that would be a possibility. But maybe I want to share an already uh, created lesson with my students in that instruction phase of my lesson. So for that, of course, as a teacher, I would first need to create that lesson in i3 Learner, save it, and then share it on the moment that we're in that remote session. So first, let's open the lesson that I want to share with you, you being my students. So it's a file you all know, uh, a lesson, you probably have seen before, but I, I just like to, uh, uh, you know, I didn't need to save that, of course, my apologies. And then let's open that again and discard the changes I made. Uh, but this um, uh, lesson is actually very easy to, um, to show the whole idea of uh, remote teaching. Um, it's very important to clearly see what we're doing here. Uh, so as a teacher, I can do this at home or I can be in the classroom as Annika uh, already pointed out. Um, more about that uh, way of working in, in, in a few minutes, uh, but let's first look at how that works in a remote se uh, session. So first of all, I've opened my lesson and now I wanna start sharing this with my students live. To do that, I'm gonna go and open the collaboration menu and I will select session sharing. Now immediately I get two options that ask me, um, you just wanna start a new session, which is without video, or do you want to uh, add your video to that session? Now, before I'm uh, activating this, I'm quickly going to disactivate my video from Zoom because as you might have seen, now we're going to sort of mix two conferencing functionalities with each other, which is Zoom and our on-air functionality, of course. So that's why I just need to um, disable my video right here in Zoom. And then let's start this new video session and do that with the current board, which is the map of Europe. There we are, and there am I. So um, now you don't see my video uh, thumbnail in Zoom, now you can see my video thumbnail in i3 Learner, 
right? Um, the important thing is now that I want to start adding my students. Uh, that's very easy. Uh, there's a link down there, um, just highlighting it with the pointer of my mouse. Uh, by clicking the uh, copy uh, icon, I can easily share this now um, with my students by mail uh, through uh, the communication system that I have uh, or that I already use in my classroom. I can share it through Google Classroom, uh, whatever system you're already using. And now I'm just sharing this with you through the chat box of Zoom. So if you um, are open to, uh, to use it, uh, then you just need to click the link that I just shared in the chat box and then off you go. And it's up to you to um, share your video if you want to. Um, you're free to do that, of course. And then going in my um, teacher view, I can perfectly follow up which students will be coming in into my classroom. So at this point, no students are there. And I can see that Alan is here. Perfect. Okay, um, we also have Anneke. And I could also say, okay, let's make sure that everybody's muted in my classroom so I can just start giving my instructions directly, okay? So from this point up, I also see that Anne is in the call here and Melanie, so my students are coming into the classroom as we speak. Uh, let's um, talk about this uh, menu right here. Um, in this overview, you can see who's uh, joining. Uh, the eye icon means that the camera is active. The mic, well, that's clear. Um, all students are muted now. So if they want to uh, add a comment or ask something, they can raise their hand, which is the icon in the video menu. So they can raise their hand so I can see uh, now that Annika wants to speak, right? Then I can say, Annika, you can open your mic now. And you can speak. Hi, Mr. David. I'm doing very good. Thank you very much. Um, and I can also see that uh, Annika has closed her mic in the meantime. Um, so if that wouldn't be the fact for the student at that point, I can always mute it from my side, okay? Other controls that you would have as a teacher is you can sort of release a student, which means that you're just uh, kicking that student out. Um, if, uh, for instance, the student is not doing what is told, and so on. And then you also have a lock feature, which means that you can um, lock the functionalities in the toolbar below, okay? This could be interesting as I want to sort of give instruction on, um, uh, on what I am uh, uh, about to do in my lesson. So to make sure that everybody's following what I'm doing, I'm going to hit the button Start Presenting. Now this is a very cool feature uh, within um, the, the on-air functionality uh, because it makes sure that my students will follow me every step I go. So if I click Start Presenting now, then if I would go to the next page, they would also go to the next page, right? And they, would, they are forced to follow what I'm doing. So I can add some more um, instructions uh, to my lesson. Um, if I'm using this uh, on my board in the classroom, I can actually uh, start building up my lesson on the board as we speak, uh, combining that with the webcam 
and my students following every step I take, right? Going back, they will need to follow me back to the map and I can start explaining what they need to do in this lesson, which is uh, drag the countries to the correct position, right? Which would be somewhere here, okay? So that as a part of the instruction phase, I can say, okay, I'm gonna stop presenting, which means that my students' tools are active again, and now they can start um, dragging the countries to the correct position, which they're already doing, right? I'm doing nothing, hands up the keyboard, hands up the mouse, and uh, my students are doing the work. Um, as a student, you can also close the menu, the side menu, so you can see uh, the, the total page, um, and you can open the menu again by hitting the collaboration menu, right? Now, while my students are building the map, I can just continue uh, with uh, explaining the functionality, um, which is uh, that you could also share any other uh, source that you might want to share uh, during your lesson. So let's say I would have a PowerPoint. Uh, let's try and open that. There we go. I'm just quickly going to open my PowerPoint on my second screen. I'm, I'm using a second screen here. And I'm just using uh, any uh, general PowerPoint that I have. Um, let's take something like this one. There we go. Now, if I would want to share that PowerPoint instead of um, my learn up lesson, then I just click that uh, video window right here. It says share your screen. And now the people that are still looking into the Zoom shared screen, they can see what I'm seeing, right? And they can see, I can choose between screens and my apologies for the Dutch language because my Chrome browser is still in Dutch. But you can also figure out that I can um, choose between apps and a Chrome tab. So it's very, very practical to switch between um, programs and between content. So you're not actually forced to only share learn of content, right? So let's say I want to use PowerPoint, right? Um, then you can also already see the, the PowerPoint in a small window. Only thing I need to do um, for my students is um, make sure they put their screen to full screen. So let me stop again. Let me show you again how that works. I'm going to share screen. I'm going to an app. I'm going to select the app I want to use, and there it is. So it, it appears as a thumbnail on the screen. And then I just need to say to my students that in their video window, there are three dots in the right corner, and they can go to view full screen. Now, for your convenience and convenience of the teachers, we have made sort of an overview of um, uh, how that needs to go, right? So sort of a one pager showing you step by step what you need to do as well for the, for the teacher as for the students. So they have a clear overview. Hey, what's going on here? What do I need to do? But clear instruction is of course the key. So I'm going to go to full screen and now the students are actually seeing what I'm seeing on my PowerPoint which is very practical, of course. Only downside on this um, uh, feature is that at that point, uh, the students cannot see the teacher because the teacher is sharing the content from PowerPoint at that point, right? So if I stop my sharing screen, there we go. I go out of full screen and then I'm back to my normal view, right? So. This is a very easy way of sharing your content remotely uh, while you're in the classroom or working from home. Um, 
And last but not least, you're also able to start your recording using a Dropbox account that you have, and then your recording will be recorded uh, or will be saved better um, in your Dropbox account where you can share the link from there or you download it, you put it somewhere else, whatever you would like to do, of course. So that as a short introduction of how um, the on-air functionality works in iClearLearner. So in a nutshell, it's a way to uh, start remote learning. Um, if you're in the classroom, well, then we call it hybrid learning because you've got students at home and students in the classroom. Um, and in a few minutes, Annika will give you some more details on that. Um, but while you're doing that, you have total control of your lesson management and your student management uh, because you will be the one saying who's able to talk, who's not, who's able to do something on the, on the lesson and who's not. And the great thing is even your students in the class, as well as your students at home can uh, take part of that process. They can come to the board and write on the board, type on the board, uh, drag things around, um, make exercises and so on and so forth. So that is very, very strong. Um, I think that in, in a sort, in a short overview is what iFreeLearner on air does. Um, so available for all users and for the paid users, uh, which are the individual and site users, have the ability to share um, this lesson or this uh, uh, lesson sh uh, session, <laughs> as we could call it, with 40 students. Um, so that's a lot more than we had before. Uh, before there was a maximum of 25. So we took it up until 40, uh, which would be more convenient, of course, sharing that with bigger groups. Um, so on again, that's uh, what uh, what my demonstration is uh, so far. Um, and I think it's, uh, it's high time that we can see how that hybrid classroom is being organized. Back to you. Thank you, Davy. Let's share my screen again. Here we are. So, live as it is for the moment is, as David told you, we have the classroom where you can actually create your hybrid classroom, where you have a digital or an interactive board, where you have a webcam over here and the teacher in the classroom. I don't know how, it's, how it, um, it is in your country, but in Belgium, we are only available with like 14 or 15 students in the classroom. So that means that a lot of students are still at home. So with i3Learn up on air, you can give your instructions in the classroom, but also invite the students who are at home to um, come into your session, just as we showed you um, in the i3Learn up on air. But of course, sometimes there are more than 14 students from your classroom at school, but they are not allowed to go in one classroom. So that's why we create the double classroom. So you have in the two rooms, you have the same uh, construction. You have two interactive boards, you have two times a webcam, and everybody can um, share or come into the same sharing session with the code. Of course, with i3 Learn Hub on air. So that means that in classroom A, you have the teacher who is giving the instruction. In classroom B, you have another teacher, but with the same students who are normal, normally in classroom A. So everybody, classroom A, classroom B, and the students at home, they are actually in one and the same i3 Learn Hub on air session. So a really, really nice way to do this um, at this moment where we don't have the ability to be in the classroom with our normal, um, our normal group of students from um, 
from 20 or 25 or more students. So I think this is a very good example of the hybrid classroom for the moment. Yeah. So, okay. I think that was a nice um, conclusion of what is the hybrid classroom. If you want to have some more information, you all know, but I will just tell it once more. We have the i 3 All-Stars um, on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, and of course our YouTube channel where you can find tutorials from all the buttons of i 3 Learner and of course also the recordings from the webinars. And you can also find us at i 3 Technologies um, website, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. So um, for now, I think that's it from our side, but of course, we still leave the session some minutes open. If you have some more questions, just drop them in our Q&A. For me, thank you, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Yes, also from my side, uh, thank you very much for joining, of course. And uh, if you would have any questions that would pop up later on, I've put the address in the chat box uh, for everybody. Uh, so you can use it if you would have any remarks or questions um, regarding i on or the on-air um, feature or even the hybrid classroom setup. Um, in the mail that will be following, uh, you will also find um, uh, some more links uh, with more information um, about hybrid classroom and of course i3 LearnUp. So thank you very much uh, for joining again and have a great day. Thank you.